Uh, let's just start right off with uh, the new mechs that have come out since uh, Open Beta started on 12.12.12. 12, 12, 12. Uh, the first mech that we released, uh, the first uh, real popular mech that we released, uh, th this guy's really popular, the Reaper. Mm. Uh, he is a light mech that is, uh, you know, our, envision, our vision of a light sniper, right? Uh, we had the sharpshooter already. He's uh, a medium mech. Uh, his weapons are, are pretty wieldy, right? They, 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 they're a higher, it's a higher skilled mech. He's pretty hard to get a, get a hold of because um, these weapons have a much longer cooldown. So if you miss with the sharpshooter, it's pretty painful. Um, you need to be able to like make sure that you hit. Uh, when you hit, it hits hard, right? But it's not very forgiving when you miss. So uh, newer players tend to avoid the sharpshooter. The Reaper is, it, is a lot friendlier to players that want to play as a sniper but aren't, you know, at that high skill level where they're always going to be hitting. Uh, the reason being is uh, the weapons fire faster. They have a shorter cooldown, so they're a lot more forgiving if you miss, right? You, you've got another shot. Uh, his weapons are the AM SAR and the KE Sabo. Uh, he also has some other additional weapons, uh, the slug rifle and the Hawkins RPR. The Hawkins RPR is a, is a much faster version of the SA Hawkins. Uh, it's pretty accurate and uh, it, it does pretty good damage, but really the weapon of choice with this guy is the AM SAR. Um, it's, it's a really high accuracy rifle and it's semi auto, so you can basically just go pop, 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 pop. Um, now, Looks like some of the original mechs uh, that have been in the game for a little while actually got some graphic overhauls too. Yes, we've actually changed some of the mechs, uh, like the assault here. Oh, yeah, uh, this is the CRT recruit, this is Fred, he's always going to be TV mech. We love Fred. When I did a first look on it, I said, it looks like a CRT monitor or, <laughs> or a microwave or something. <laughs> That's exactly it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we, we love Fred. Um, there's been a lot of new chassis that have come out. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, there's, there's been changes to things. Uh, and we're actually making a lot of other uh, oh, changes nice. as well. Yeah, the Raider, he's the other guy that just came out. The Raider is a close combat nightmare. He's a shotgun mech. Uh -huh. you know, all of his weapons are shotgun type weapons. Uh, so. The first weapon that you get for him is the Reflac. It's essentially uh, a ricochet weapon. So imagine the flat cannon from flat Unreal, Unreal, Unreal Tournament. That's exactly what I was yeah. thinking of. It's, it's pretty much <laughs> like that. So if you liked that weapon, you're going to love the oh, Reflac. Yeah. I got some flashbacks right there. Exactly. <laughs> um, and then also the T32 Bolt is the next weapon that he unlocks. That weapon is a chargeable shotgun. Really, really nasty. Uh, you hold it down. You'll hear it click like three times and then these flaps will go down uh, and then when you let go of the button it'll fire. If you get that with his special weapon, the Corsair, uh, the Corsair also has two, two different fire modes, the basic mode being kind of like the tow missile except it lobs mm -hmm. uh, and eventually drops. Uh, but the secondary fire is a Merv airburst, right? So it shoots out a bunch of grenades that they'll blow up after a distance. So imagine like an explosive shotgun. Okay. okay. So mix that with a fully charged T32 yeah. bolt and you are going to decimate people. <laughs> like it hurts a lot. Now obviously it's a higher skill. It takes a little bit of skill to do that because you have to be charging and make sure you're aiming and holding on to your target and, and hitting them. But if, if you do, like we reward you for that skill. <laughs> So I can imagine with all these uh, really nice high-end weapons and stuff like that, it's, it's a li it can be a little difficult to uh, keep the balance right. in there. So I guess there are drawbacks to some uh, of the various classes like this. So that way, I mean, they obviously have to have a weakness. Definitely. So for example, like the Raider here, what do we have in terms of, you know, what would be good uh, against a Raider? Uh, the Raider is, it's very hard to, to engage long-range enemies with the Raider. He is a close combat mech, right? Like he uses shotguns and the, like even this weapon like has a limited range to it. So if you're fighting against say a sniper or a rocketeer, uh, that's a tough fight because you have to close on them before you can even start doing damage. Whereas like they're already pelting you from far away. Uh, so closing that gap, if you sneak up on them, yeah, then you're, you're, you're in a great place. But you know, on those maps where you have more space and you can see a lot more, uh, he'll be at a disadvantage against the, the longer range mechs. Nice. Um, and as we've seen right now, you know, we're, we definitely pay very, very close attention to balance. We pay attention to the community. We're seeing that reflected in, in you know, both the community's comments as well as the data that we, we track on the game. The, you know, generally in close combat situations, the Raider is very, very <laughs> successful, but in long range engagements, he definitely has a disadvantage. Now, if you're a really good player, right, you know, like, you, know how to you, still, know how to, you still know how to make things happen, but, you know, generally across the board, he, he's functioning the way we want him to. Um, 
Now, let's talk about... Do you have any, uh, any, any sort of new mechs that are... Any of the new mechs uh, feature any sort of utility yes. sort of weapons? Like, uh, I remember the, uh, Allow me to the heavy class had to, you know... Exactly. The shield was awesome. Allow me to introduce <laughs> you to the Technician. Nice. The Technician is our new mech that's coming out in April. He is the first mech in the game that can heal other players. Very nice. This mech is our new support king. Uh, the gold beam you see here is his special ability. If you use his special ability and then, and then heal people, it's like an uber charge from the medic and TF2. Oh, okay. So they get really fast sure. life regen and a damage resistance buff. Uh, if, if somebody's getting hit with that beam, you're not going to kill them, like ever. Uh, the green beam is healing, so like you're healing your, you're healing your team members. You can also switch it to an ultimate fire where you can damage enemies with it. Uh, because it's such an easy weapon to use, you know, it tracks enemies, like it doesn't do a ton of damage. We really want this mech to be more about healing and support. It's not meant to be a killer. So the way that we balance him is uh, based around him supporting other members and making it easier for them to kill guys. Uh, whereas he, he gets the majority of his score from healing mechs. Like we, we reward the player for healing mechs and for using his weapon, the modded SMC. That weapon applies a debuff to enemy mechs. When you shoot them, it'll stack a damage debuff up to 15%. So your team members will do 15% more damage against that mech. Does he have any sort of abilities, like maybe special abilities that heal himself? Uh, you know, I mean, all mechs can heal themselves well, yeah, just with right. the repair that's thing. Right. You have that. Uh, doesn't have any special additional. <clears throat> right. And then we also have the repair charge. If you equip that on your mech, you can drop that and heal. Uh, but really, his main focus is around supporting the other team members on the field and keeping them their health up. We think it's going to flip the game on its head, right? Because now, you know, imagine heavies running around with a technician following them. And it brings in the, just, you know, the team-based support. They don't know. Hawken nice. is very much a team-based game, and we've always known that and we've always wanted to focus on that element of Hawken. Um, you know, even though we have a deathmatch mode, really where Hawken shines is in the team deathmatch modes, the siege modes, and the missile attack modes where you're working together. Um, that's when the dynamics between the different mechs really come out and you can really start to see uh, the fun of the different mech styles. Uh, so, yeah, we really want to start seeing things like heavies busting into areas of opposition and whereas like before like a heavy could kind of do that but he'd say he just lasts a little bit longer but now with the technician like the heavy's going to be the guy that's you know breaking the beachhead right mm -hmm. he's the one that's going to come busting through that corridor where there's three mechs on the other side and he's going to kind of get that foothold uh, you know and then players are going to have to learn how to deal with that combo and you know prioritize the technician over the heavy uh, just like you would in tf2 right don't kill the heavy kill the right. medic um and he's really like the technician is really the first strike at, at our big vision for where we want mechs to go this year. Um, we're really, really pushing for mech individuality, right? I call it mech personality. Um, it's essentially making mechs very, very individual so that each mech is very, very, is very specific and has, a, has a, a play style that's immediately recognizable, right? Just like League of Legends Heroes, right? You think about Rise and you know, like, Rise, you play him like this, or Trindamir, you play him like this, or Teemo, you play him like this. Um, and on top of that, the synergy that those characters have between, you know, with other characters is different depending on, you know, who you're with and who you're Absolutely. playing with. We want that same thing for Hawken. We want that synergy between mechs where if you're playing as a technician, your synergy is with, like, stick around with the big guys, keep them alive. You know, they'll keep you alive, and then you're helping to push around. And, you know, if, if a dude is really good with a technician, he's going to be on the top of the boards. He's going to get on par experience with guys that are out there getting, you know, 32 kills and only five deaths. The reason for that is we want to incentivize players to fill those roles. We want them to feel like they don't have to be, like, Call of Duty hero to be able to be successful at Hawken. They can provide some other value to the battlefield and still be, you know, on the top of the boards. Very nice. Yeah, I mean... Uh, choice definitely has to matter in those sort of things, and then you know you you get to play what you want to play, and and that's how you support your you know your team. <laughs> exactly. That's how you do it. Exactly. You know, so as as more mechs come out this year, they're they're going to be following that paradigm, right? We're actually training totally changing up our skills. Uh, the, the the skill tree as it stands now is going away. Okay. We're going to replace it. We want we want things to be individual per mech, right? So when you start leveling up your mech and you start choosing what that skill tree is going to be specific to that mech. Now, it's not we're we're looking at doing away with numbers. Numbers are hard to balance, right? Like because especially because of the level difference, the way we're looking at it now is as your mech levels up, you have access to functionality, right? You can change the way the mech functions like 
changing the way that your special works or things like that. You know, we're not releasing details on that yet, okay. uh, but generally it's going to put more focus on individual, further individualization of the mech and focusing on what its strengths are specifically to that mech. Uh, we're really, really excited for that, and, and we think it's really going to, you know, bring a lot to the game. So yesterday, I was talking to, at the booth there. Um, so there are also recent changes in the in the matchmaking. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Like, yeah. In terms of how how to find uh, games and get that set up. So matchmaking, when we first launched the game, definitely, you know, we went through some issues. We fixed those issues. Had more issues, fix those issues as well. Matchmaking is always a difficult thing. Sure. It's an extremely complicated process. Um, just in our last update, uh, we feel like we've really, really hit a stride with matchmaking. The community's very happy uh, with the balance in the matches. Our data shows that matches are generally within the thresholds that we finally you know, have been shooting for. Um, we brought back the server browser. That's a big one. The reason we took it out in the first place, I was actually the one that axed it, right? Uh, is because it was totally screwing with matchmaking. People were like, really wanting the server browser, but at the same time, they hated the matchmaking. And so, you know, I actually wrote a producer letter to talk about it, say like, the reason we're getting rid of the server browser is, one, it doesn't take any matchmaking into account. So people were getting themselves into matches where the rating of the server was way higher than their level or way lower. So there was, you know, it was just all over the place. You could be getting into a match and get your face punched in and that's not fun right no. like no one likes to everyone wants a challenge but if it's such a high level of difficulty that you feel like you're just not even there right you're not even bringing anything to the field it's not fun right it's it's okay to lose if you you feel like you had a chance to win it's not okay to lose if you like never got a kill right yeah. move four feet yeah <laughs> boom i'm dead yeah and that's not fun um, so matchmaking has always been a very core focus for us, and we continue to upgrade it and, and optimize it. You know, we want it to not, not only needs to be really good at, at getting you into fair matches, but it needs to be quick, right? People want to play the game. We don't want them sitting there waiting for two minutes to get into a game. Um, so we continue, we continue to work on that. Uh, our, our goal really is to just continually to, to make players feel like whenever they get into a match, there's about a 50-50 chance of them winning or losing, right? At the end of the game, you know, you're going to have your spread, too. You're going to have your... There's always going to be that, that pecking order within a match. I mean, we've all played Call of Duty. We've all played Battlefield. And, you know, you have your really good guys up at the top, and then you see them, you know, slowly... Exponentially. Like, yeah, yeah, sometimes exponentially. <laughs> sometimes but we want, exponentially. It to, we want it to be a good spread, though. Like, we don't want it to be, like, two guys up at the top with, like, 37 kills, and then, like, everybody else with, like, zero kills. Like, you see, like, this guy got 25, and this guy got 17, and this guy got 12, and this guy got five and this guy got three you know and their KD ratios are you know they, they spread but it should be the same on the other team too so you know one of the things that we're also doing right now uh, the, t the game's not the game doesn't currently auto balance so if someone leaves the server brings people back in uh, but it doesn't necessarily take into consideration the current rankings of the team so like what we do is we take the aggregate of both sides and we say like, okay, this team has this skill rating, this team has this skill rating. And what the matchmaker will do is it'll say, okay, this team has this skill rating, this team lost a player, so I need to find a player of this skill rating and drop him in uh, instead of just grabbing a new player and throwing him in there and then throwing the balance off, right? Uh, and then also between matches, making sure we actually, oh, actually, we actually already do that. So between matches right now, we've actually started saying like, okay, who's on, because some people leave and things like that, right? We rebalance the teams to make sure that there's an equal amount of skill level between both sides so that as the game moves forward, there's always that feeling of balance, right? The players always feel like, this match was at my skill level. I feel like I should be here, right? So I also heard about, uh, there's a, a setup you have here at, at PAX uh, showing a, a new, possibly a new level that actually has very dis destructive yes. like environments and yes. walls break, you shoot through them, things like that. That let sounds me, exciting. Let me show you the NVIDIA Destruction Physics demo. This is Hawk and they built a map for us and this new tech that we've integrated into the game, fully destructible environments. Oh man. Yeah. It's awesome. That <laughs> looks awesome. You need to go downstairs to the NVIDIA booth right across from our booth. <clears throat> they have four, four machines set up with this running. It is amazing. It is so awesome to just blow a hole through the floor, jump down there, blow up some mechs. Like the mechs even have weight too, so if you fall from far enough, you can actually bust through a floor. Through a floor wow. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, oh, it's so sweet just to see a tow missile that just like yeah. chunks go flying everywhere. We get our particle effects. 
<clears throat> you know, he like he knocks stuff down onto other mechs. And I'm not gonna lie, I bought, a, I bought a new video card and the first game I played with it was fun. <laughs> that a boy. Just because I was like, I want to see all I the gotta particle see effects. All the particle effects. Yeah, I, yeah. I run dual S, I run dual uh, 680s in my oh machine at my home. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's it's, it's 580. It's kind of that was the card I had before I, I got these cards. Uh, oh my gosh, dual 680s in this game. That's insane. <laughs> it just looks. I want this now. Uh, we don't have any. Uh, uh, we don't have any. Um, Current details on when this will be available in the game. Right now, it's the tech demo, uh, but we definitely plan on implementing it into the game, and we we actually think it would be a really cool tech for a game mode. Right? We've actually talked about using the destruction tech specifically around a game mode. Um, again, no details on that, but definitely keep keep your ears to the ground. So the last thing I want to show you before. Uh, before you guys head out is our new map, Valkyrie. Mm -hmm. Valkyrie is the next map that's coming out. It's a very different map uh, art style from our other maps. A lot of our other maps are darker, a lot more dystopic. Uh, Valkyrie, Valkyrie is, is kind of our imagining of a, uh, a more affluent neighborhood. You can see like we have a lot, you know, rounder lines on some of the buildings. They look a lot cleaner. They look, you know, they're, they're more spaced out. They're not like squat and, and bunched together. Like that Asian East ghetto feel, East Asian ghetto <laughs> feel from uh, from like Andromeda, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, Andromeda was very much heavily designed around like a, a get a, like a very urban neighborhood in like Vietnam or or maybe like Singapore. That was the impression I got in one of the maps, is and, and I don't forget which one, but but you get on top of the buildings and it's although it's it's really dystopian all around, but sometimes when you get down inside the valleys and stuff, it gets really dark, and uh, I like that feeling. This is a, a definitely a different we feel option. we feel yeah we feel really, <laughs> really we're nice. really really excited about it and actually this map was one of the maps that we tested during closed beta uh, but it was white box at the time so now this is the map that's you know after it's skinned nice. um, and we're just really really happy with it it looks great um, it really brings a new flavor to Hawken and we think the players are gonna love it any uh, so what is your primary focus on the game right now like uh, I mean you just released this I mean, what sort of things are like your, your main focus on? Like, sure. What are you looking to, to, to change the most out of it? What do you want to see coming? So content-wise, our main focus is pumping out more mechs, pumping out more maps. Um, we know that we need to have way more mechs than we have right now. Uh, we will continue to release one mech a month, like we've said we were going to do. Um, and we're actually going to be ahead of that a little bit here soon. I think we're going to have a month where we release a couple mechs. Um, and... Uh, you know, maps take longer, but again, we'll be releasing maps on a, a good cadence so that players have new maps to play on and new experiences. Now, in terms of features, uh, we've got the party system coming. That's, you know, been something we wanted in the game a long time ago. It's just a lot of work, right? But that'll help people stay together. You know, friends love to play with friends. I love to play with my friends. Uh, getting into a party and just being able to go from server to server is going to be awesome. The achievement system is coming. Uh, clans are coming. Uh, you know, we have a, we have a, a ton of features on our roadmap that are that are still coming for the game that are really going to uh, really really change the the dynamic of the game and and just you know continue to add to that experience. Uh, w one of the things that I love about free to play is that we can just continually upgrade and and change the game you know based on what we learn from the community and based on what we learn from our data to just make it the get the best experience possible. And that's really what we're going for is to continue and polish to continue to polish and and and, and refine Hawken. Uh, to the point where we feel like it's really, really a top-notch experience. I mean, we already, feel, we already feel really good about it, but we feel like we have a lot more work to do as well. Well, I've got to hand it to you. I mean, as, as small as the team is that works on Hawken, it's very impressive, like, what, what y'all guys can come up with. I, Thank you very much. Uh, definitely one of the... Uh, mo we had a video of most anticipated uh, games of 2013, and mm -hmm. Hawken was definitely on it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We're flattered. We're flattered. Of that, so. Yeah, we're very, we're very, very excited, and we feel very, very lucky that players uh, have just, you know, really attached to the game like they have. They really, they really love it, and we love making it. You know, I the first time I saw Hawken, I fell in love with it. It's why I wanted to come work on the project. You know, yeah. So, and then now recently you had a a, a novel. Um, yes. That's kind of alongside Hawken. Do you have, you have information about that? Our graphic novel uh, is basically what tells the story of Hawken, right? We have this. We actually have this whole story around the world of Hawken. It, it takes place on this planet called Alal. 
Uh, it's a planet that was colonized by these different mega corporations and then basically over industrialized to the point of collapse. These corporations compete with each other for resources. Uh, and there's actually an element of a, a virus that was released by one of the corporations because of an accident. And now that virus is infecting the planet with what's called the gigastructure. So it's like a metallic cancer, basic, basically. They're, they're like these nanobot viruses that infect organic things and turn them into metal. Um, and the the graphic novel, which is on sale at our booth downstairs, actually, if people are interested in that, um, it it tells the story of these pioneers who went to this planet, like why they're there and why they're still there. Uh, even after that accident that created the gigastructure, it actually created this interesting um, byproduct where some of the animals started to learn to consume the virus and then the byproduct was energy, right? Oh, wow. You know, so now these corporations have discovered this and energy is always a resource that's in, in huge demand and so they're trying to farm it now. Now the competition is over the energy. Uh, so it kind of tells the story of, the, of that war between the corporations and you know, who these people are and why they're there and, and what their stories are. Definitely gonna check it out. That sounds like a very elaborate story. It's, uh, yeah, it's actually really awesome. I, like I really that. like I'm a huge sci-fi nerd, and so yeah, like, that kind of stuff is, is totally right up my alley. Uh, and, <laughs> and the fact that it's all based around mechs doesn't help at all. Like, that. <laughs> I'm a huge mech nerd, too. You know, I've loved mech games since I was a little kid. Played all the mech warrior games. I loved Robotech. I loved Gundam. You know? Well, I appreciate your time. Is there anything else you'd like to say? For no, that's, that's pretty much it. You know, Come play Hawkins. Looks play. great. Great. All right. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you so much.